again. <clears throat> the Speaker has received notice from the Executive Office that the First Minister and Deputy First Minister wish to make the statement on the North-South Minister Council Institutional Meeting of the 11th of March. Before I call Junior Minister Kearney to make a statement on their behalf, I remind members that in light of social distancing being observed by parties, the Speaker's ruling that members must be in the Chamber to hear a statement if they wish to ask a question has been relaxed. Members do still have to make sure that their name is on the list, uh, and they can do so by rising in their place. We will add their name to the list of those who wish to ask questions. Or alternatively, uh, I provide information to the Speaker's uh, table directly. And I would remind members this is an opportunity to ask questions on the statement provided, uh, and they should be concise. It is not an opportunity to make statements themselves. So I would encourage members to ask uh, questions in order that as many members as possible will be able to follow and also ask questions. Minister, I invite you to make comment. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in compliance with Section 52C, uh, Paragraph 2 of the NI Act 98, I want to make the following statement on the 11th North South Ministerial Council Institutional Meeting, which was held at the NSMC Joint Secretariat offices in Armagh on the 11th of March this year. The Irish Government was represented by Helen McAtee, TD, Minister of State for European Affairs. The executive was represented by Junior Minister Gordon Lyons and myself. Minister McAtee chaired the meeting. Minister Lyons has agreed that I should make this report on his behalf. The Council approved the appointment of board members to the Trade and Business Development Body, Intertrade Ireland, and also directors to Tourism Ireland Limited to fill a limited number of urgent and critical vacancies which were affecting the governance of both boards. The Council also agreed that appointments will be made to fill the remaining vacancies on these boards and on the boards of other North-South ministerial and other North-South implementation bodies at future meetings of the NSMC. Thank you. Mr. I now call on the chairperson of the Committee for the Executive Office, Colin McGrath. Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister and welcome for his timely and extensive uh, report. Um, I, I welcome that these appointments and appreciate that they are filling spaces in north-south bodies uh, following the lack of an assembly for three years, and that they are essential appointments to very important boards. And I hope that the appointments do not follow what has happened in the RQIA. Now, I have tried uh, checking the North South Ministerial Council website but cannot find the names of the people that were appointed and I was wondering maybe if we could get those uh, as soon as possible unless maybe they are posted elsewhere. But could I ask the Minister that given the critical North South nature of the bodies and the work that the Council does, could he detail to us the sort of obvious, urgent and additional uh, workload that the Council and the bodies will have to undertake as a result of the rushed Brexit process that we are being subjected to? Thank the, uh, the chair of the TEO committee for that contribution. Uh, for your information, the uh, appointments made were Florence Bayliss and Adrian McGuinness, who were appointed as board members to Intertrade Ireland, and also Joan O'Shaughnessy, who was appointed as chairperson, and Noreen Haggerty, who was appointed as a board member on the Board of Tourism Ireland. All uh, members of uh, implementation bodies should be available online, and uh, I'll speak with officials after uh, this morning's meeting to clarify whether, in fact, that is indeed the case or not. In terms of the, uh, the broader issues that, uh, that the member raises, uh, clearly in the context of uh, Brexit, this does have implications for the, uh, the work of the uh, NSMC. Um, what I would say is that uh, while the, UK, the, uh, the British government's withdrawal from the EU 
and its practical application of the uh, withdrawal agreement will have implications under strand two. These are not specifically or solely issues that will be addressed under the auspices of the NSMC itself. However, uh, as has already been identified within the agreed protocol, it is envisaged that the NSMC and North-South uh, implementation bodies will play a role. And one particular instance of that will be the, uh, the negotiation and the operation of Peace Plus, for, for example. Uh, in, in second terms, the New Decade, New Approach document also commits the Brexit subcommittee to initiate an assessment of the impact of Brexit on the institutions, uh, both applicable on a north-south and on an east-west basis. I call Paula Bradley. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Junior Minister for his statement. Um, Junior Minister, given that remote working has now become the new norm, and indeed the Executive are encouraging it, um, do you see value in meetings north-south south taking place via video conferencing or other technology going forward? And thank you for the, the question. Yes, I do. Uh, and I also see that being applicable in the context of the, the necessary convening of meetings of the, uh, the BAC, the British Irish Council, and also would be of an assistance, in my view, to see the convening and the uh, full operation of the British and Irish Intergovernmental Conference. I call Pat Sheehan. I wonder, could the Minister tell us if there are any plans for the North South Ministerial Council to meet in a plenary format any time soon? Uh, the, the requirement for uh, seeking meetings of the NSMC in plenary format rests with the Irish government. The Irish government uh, is responsible for convening the next plenary meeting of the, of the NSMC. That has not been done. Um, it's a huge disappointment that we have not, uh, since the restoration of our power-sharing government here in the North, seen uh, a plenary sitting of the North-South Ministerial Council, or of the British and Irish Council, or of the British and Irish Intergovernmental Council. Uh, in, in my opinion, we need to see all strands under the terms of the uh, Good Friday Agreement within their institutional framework back to work, and as urgently as possible, and frankly, government formation in the uh, south of Ireland and the onset of COVID-19, which we have all been living through, don't constitute valid reasons for not convening uh, a plenary sitting of the NSMC. That should be done urgently, and the, uh, the Taoiseach, either the caretaker Taoiseach or the incoming Taoiseach, should move immediately and urgently to uh, remedy that, uh, that failure. I call Steve Aiken. Mr Deputy Speaker, and may I thank the junior minister for his statement. Um, it's interesting to see that in this new decade, new approach of openness and transparency, there's been appointments made to quite significant boards here on the North-South process. I would like the minister outline what the recruitment process was, what approach was taken to making sure that they have the best people for the job, what is the remuneration package that was, and bearing in mind the discussions during new decade, new approach, was that there would be a de-hunt process brought into appointments to boards, how that this one seems to have been completely ignored. Thank you. The appointments that were made on the 11th of March were Irish government appointments. Uh, there are a number of vacancies uh, which remain extant in relation to the, uh, the full complement of all implementation bodies. Uh, there are currently 10 executive vacancies on the boards of the north-south implementation bodies, and it will be up to the executive to nominate the individuals to, fulfill, to fill those allocated vacancies, and those appointments will be formally made at a subsequent NSMC. That cannot happen until uh, the next plenary meeting, which it is the responsibility of the Irish government to convene. And, uh, unfortunately, I do not know the remuneration for members of boards, chairs or vice chairs of boards, but I will ensure that that information is shared with you. I call Andrew Muir. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The um, 11th of March was a, a long time ago, uh, especially in the context of the public health emergency that we've been experiencing around COVID-19 and the economic crisis. Can I ask why the North South Ministerial Council has not met since then? Because COVID-19 doesn't stop at the border, and I think it's actually a real reason why they, these institutions should be working. They're there for a purpose, and why have we not actually been utilising those institutions? Uh, I thank the member for his question, and it overlaps with the uh, earlier question by Pat Sheehan. Um, I apologise, uh, members, that uh, this statement was not brought to the, uh, the House at an earlier stage. Uh, there have not been uh, plenary meetings or sectoral meetings of the NSMC in the period that you have uh, stipulated. The only meeting that has occurred under the auspices of NSMC has been the institutional meeting about which I have provided a report. And, uh, it's simply not acceptable. Uh, we need to see the, uh, all of the, the bodies under all of the institutional frameworks of the Good Friday Agreement in full operation. Uh, we have re-established our power-sharing institutions here in the north. It is time now that the NSMC became fully operational. The responsibility rests with the Irish Government for convening the next meeting of the NSMC. And, and frankly, we, we should dispense with the foot dragging and the prevarication, and Antishuk should move urgently to ensure that that plenary meeting takes place. But you're absolutely right. Uh, it has been too long a passage of time. What I would add, just for information purposes for the member, Six meetings have taken place in a, a quadrilateral format uh, since the beginning of uh, COVID-19 to address matters pertaining to COVID-19. But I, I would uh, emphasise all of those meetings, with the exception of the uh, 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 sectoral meeting, uh, the institutional meeting, which I attended, have all taken place outside Strand 2 of the institutional framework. I call Tom Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, can I ask the Minister how he will ensure that the next crucial period for our tourism sector here in Northern Ireland, that Tourism Ireland's priorities and resources are sufficiently focused on Northern Ireland? Absolutely. And I, I thank the, the member for his question on that issue. Um, the member will be aware that uh, the, uh, the executive, uh, the uh, joint first ministers, will notify the executive of any future NSMC meetings and including uh, the agenda. And a report will be made to the assembly by the appropriate minister after each such meeting. The, uh, the legislation requires that uh, appointed ministers to attend the sectoral meetings of the NSMC uh, will be accompanied uh, on the cross-community requirement. Uh, so that will ensure that on the next occasion when uh, tourism matters relating to our affairs in this region are being addressed under the framework of the NSMC, that we will have attendance and we will have two ministers involved in that process the lead minister and an accompanying minister. And I am sure that the necessary preparation will be undertaken to ensure that our interests, particularly in this very challenging period, with huge challenges for our tourism and our hospitality industry, are adequately addressed to ensure that we come through this period and, and enter into a recovery uh, which maintains the resilience and grows the resilience of our tourism and our hospitality industry here in the north. Nicole Martina Anderson. Goi uh, alas can call you. And um, I want to acknowledge the appointment of the board members to Intertrade Ireland and to Tourism Ireland. I think that's welcome news uh, for all to hear. I would like to ask the Minister uh, what impact has the government formation in the South had on the functioning of the All-Ireland Ministerial Council during the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, go on, Buehis, don't call the Azokton question a uh, Again, th this question uh, overlaps with two 
previous questions. Um, the, uh, the, the fact is that there has not been a plenary session of uh, the Can I remind the member to address the chair so that his comments are picked up in the mic microphone? Yes, of course. Yes, Concordia. That's very helpful advice from you. Um, so, uh, there hasn't been, there, there hasn't been, a, uh, there hasn't been a, a plenary setting. There have been no other meetings under the auspices of the, uh, of the NSMC. And that needs to be urgently addressed. It can only be done, however, because, as I have twice repeated, uh, the requirement, the onus is upon the Irish Government to convene the next meeting of the plenary session. Uh, it is up to the Irish Government to, uh, to propose a date, to bring forward a CLAR, to bring forward an agenda, and then in turn to uh, ensure that that is passed to the joint heads of government in order that they can Junior process Minister, if you're not facing the mic, order, that, order, that can, order, order. Please, please retain, take, take your seat, please. Please take your seat. I, I tried to encourage you to address the chair. I'm barely hearing you, and I'm sure Hans Turt will be struggling. So, can you please address your comments to the chair so that your microphone picks everything up and it is duly recorded for others to hear. Minister. Uh, point of orders are not taken during uh, statements. Uh, you may raise the point of order after the period of questions, if that's okay. Junior Minister. Okay, Lars uh, Concordia. So, uh, as I was trying to, uh, to finish, the, the requirement is on the Irish Government to uh, identify a date, provide an agenda, process that to the uh, joint heads of government in order for them to uh, agree with the agenda items to be addressed in that plenary session, and then in turn to confirm a date. And it is my hope that that process would be carried out as expeditiously as possible. I call Harry Harvey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> Junior Minister, what impact has the absence of an Irish government and the Irish Republic had on the effect of, of North South bodies? Thank you. Uh, I thank the member for his question, and, and, and again, it, it, it overlaps with uh, the, the contributions of other members. Uh, we have not had any sittings of the North-South Ministerial Council uh, since uh, we restored power sharing here in the North. That extends to uh, the non-operation of Strand 3. We have not seen a BIC meeting and we have not seen the uh, convening of the BIAGC. Uh, if we are in fact to ensure that our uh, power sharing administration and Strand 1 under the Good Friday Agreement are to be fully and properly supported, then we need to see full uh, activation of strand two and strand three. So uh, there, 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 there have been lots of issues uh, which have uh, impacted on political and civic and community life, uh, not least COVID-19 during the course of the last period of months, but none of them should get in the way of the effective implementation of the, uh, the Good Friday Agreement. So therefore, while uh, there has not been a government uh, formed yet in the 26 counties. That process is still underway. Nevertheless, there is a caretaker government in place, and it is the responsibility of the caretaker government to fulfil its requirements under the terms of the Good Friday Agreement uh, Strand 2 framework. I call Emma Sheeran. And I thank the Minister for his statement. Um, can I ask how many meetings of Ministers North and South have occurred during the COVID-19 pandemic? And has the Memorandum of Understanding proved beneficial between both administrations? Uh, uh, o V uh, and Panjem Agfainu Fodfad na Helen Lishna Mina Shawanuas. There have been six meetings uh, in a quadrilateral format since the beginning of COVID-19. But as I said earlier, they have all taken place outside the, uh, the Strand Two framework. Um, the uh, memorandum of understanding, as the member rightly observes has been signed uh, between uh, both administrations. Yes, it has been of benefit. It, it has been a useful document. It codified effectively what uh, our uh, 
CMO and our CSAs respectively uh, across the island and the work of the two uh, uh, ministers of health were already involved in, but nevertheless it uh, serves as an important benchmark uh, for how we can in fact ensure that the fight back against COVID-19 is taken forward in an effective and a coherent way on an all-island basis in order that we can maximise common working in terms of the sharing of information, uh, ensuring that we are sharing modelling, uh, that we are sharing uh, data, and that we are in fact ensuring that as we move into the process of universal uh, community uh, testing and contact tracing, that that can be effectively carried out on an all-island basis. I call Matthew O'Toole. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, thanks to the Minister for the update. Um, in relation to the appointment to the boards of Intertrade Ireland, there is clearly a specific Brexit interaction there, and particularly in regards to the implementation of the protocol, um, the protection of the All Island, and indeed the development of the All Island economy. I appreciate what the um, Minister has said about the lack of an Irish government to convene or to, to interact with this, but can I ask if uh, the Executive Office have written to the Irish Government urging them to um, commission a specific strand of work under the North-South Ministerial Council, and specifically to get Intertrade Ireland to uh, ramp up work in terms of managing the implementation of the protocol and ensuring that businesses on all, in all parts of the island are um, best placed to um, both uh, adjust to the protocol, but also to take advantages of continued access to the European single market. I think the member for that question. Uh, the, the new decade, new approach document uh, makes provision for the establishment of the Brexit subcommittee, and, and it has been tasked uh, with the uh, initiation of uh, a full assessment in relation to the impact of Brexit on the various institutions, as I indicated earlier, not just the institutions in and of themselves, but obviously the sectors uh, which they are responsible for overseeing. So consideration of that particular issue, that is the assessment, has now been taken forward in its, uh, its forward work programme. I am of the view, and I am sure the member shares this opinion with me, that uh, North-South Ministerial Council meetings do present an opportunity for all ministers North and South, going back to the question asked uh, by, by colleagues earlier, uh, to discuss Brexit issues that are going to impact very directly on their respective areas of uh, cooperation on an all-island basis. I call Mike Nesbitt. Deputy Speaker, thank you. Just saying with New Decade, New Approach, Part 2, Paragraph 4 makes a commitment to, and I quote, an ambitious package of measures to strengthen transparency and governance arrangements in the Assembly and Executive in line with international best practice. Does the Junior Minister think that the timing and content of his statement today meets that standard? Uh, thank the member for his question, and I take it uh, in, at face value uh, as, as a genuine inquiry. Um, yes, I agree that we always need to aspire towards and ensure that international best standards are maintained, both in terms of, of our political uh, life, political governance, and then how we conduct civic and community business. The limitations of the statement are simply restricted to the business that was carried out that day. The meeting took place, uh, I don't believe it lasted much more than 12 minutes, and it was for our power-sharing government to approve the proposals being put forward by the Irish government for these appointments to be made. Had I had more to say, I would of course shared that wisdom and thoughts with the member. I, call yes, I provided the names earlier on, perhaps you didn't hear them. I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister, um, for your statement. The North-South Ministerial Council is a very important body, and it should be a very important component for our economic recovery uh, at this time. And, and it's regrettable that many of its boards are so badly depleted. 
um, when we most need them to be fully operational. But based on well, the, the two in particular for our economic recovery is Intertrade Ireland uh, uh, and Tourism Ireland. But on the basis of Tourism Ireland, the Irish Draft Programme for Government has um, in it a commitment to support the linkages of the wide Atlantic Way and the Causeway Coast. Um, uh, which promises to provide a major boost to Derry City as we're at the beginning and the end of both. So, um, can the Minister give a clear commitment that Tourism Ireland will fully engage with this project and the exec Executive will this time give full support to this important vision? And at the, when I say urgently, we are going into a period now, a very short tourism opportunity. Um, and it's going to be about staycations, and we need the focus of Tourism Ireland to be on this island uh, and between the two components. The members asked their question. Thank Minister. You. Well, Milaboy, as that has often cash and occur, I thank the member for that question, and, and of course you're right, uh, particularly given that uh, we are living through the associated economic and social emergency alongside our health emergency. It's essential that we, uh, we proceed to reboot, to warm up and to reactivate our economy in all of its sectors at this point in time. And the particular sector that faces greatest uh, jeopardy at this time because it is so seasonally sensitive as our hospitality and our tourism industry. So yes, uh, the, the executive is fully committed to ensuring that all aspects of our tourist industry here in this region uh, are maximised and I can give the member an assurance that uh, when the, uh, the next meeting of the NSMC plenary convenes, and as I said earlier, it needs to be done urgently, uh, there should be no more foot dragging or prevarication. The Irish government should convene that meeting. That will provide an important opportunity and forum for these issues to be discussed out in detail and in a strategic sense. I call Rachel Woods. Deputy Speaker, I'm Minister, for your statement. Given the lack of detail here, has there been any discussion or arrival at an agreed position regarding the engagement with the Specialised Committee on the Northern Ireland Protocol, either through quadrilateral meetings or otherwise? Uh, yes, uh, although I, I would uh, say to the member it, it falls outside the context of this particular discussion, but I am happy to share information with you on that issue. Uh, yes, the, uh, the, the need for the Specialised Committee to meet uh, is an urgency. Uh, it has not been addressed in the. Uh, it has been addressed in the context of quadrilateral engagements with the, uh, the British government, the Scottish, and the Welsh uh, governments, alongside our own administration. Uh, there has been one meeting of the Specialised Committee. Uh, in recent weeks, I have twice asked for a date to be confirmed for the second meeting of that committee because, as the member will know, it has specific operational responsibility in relation to the implementation of the protocol. Uh, no date has yet been set, uh, but arising from the meeting of the Joint Committee, uh, which took place earlier this month, uh, the uh, EC Vice President asked specifically for a date to be set, and the British Government uh, Minister Michael Gove gave a commitment that a meeting of the specialised, a date for the second meeting of the specialised committee, would take place within four weeks. At this point in time, I do not have that date to share with the member. I call Jim Allister. Thank you. I want to ask about the openness and transparency, or the lack thereof, of these north-south bodies. If we take Intertrade Ireland by way of example and go to its website, we discover no annual report or accounts published from 2017. No corporate plan from 1416. No board of director minutes from March 19. Why is that? And when you do go to the website and look who the board of directors are, the ones you've just announced aren't even there. But three faces do jump out at you. You have Jimmy Spratt. You have Timothy Kearns. You have Councillor Greenfield. Are the appointments to these boards just sinecures for political hacks who don't need of any expertise on the subject matter. Well, go on, boy has done colta as oct and cast how oct action occur or maigat. You're absolutely right. Uh, all the affairs of government 
uh, and that extends to all strands of the institutional strands of the Good Friday Agreement, must be subject to maximum transparency. So, if that data, that detail, is omitted from the uh, the online records, then I would expect, and I'll raise this with officials afterwards, uh, I would expect that that should be uh, fully provided. I see no reason why all of the information which the a member has inquired about should not be made publicly available, both online and through other sources. I call Justin McNulty. Gurmayovich, Lost Cam Carla. I find it hilarious, Minister, that you are attacking the Irish government after 100 days, when after a thousand days of the prevarication and foot dragging of the two joint ministers' parties, this place remained down for a thousand days, and you are attacking another institution after 100 days. Did the ministers have any discussions about the particular challenges they would face, and specifically refer to cross-border workers, and those, the many of whom, who have been left behind during this pandemic? Well, uh, uh, I think the, uh, the member's uh, comments are, are slightly misdirected uh, by drawing out a suggestion of some insinuation. Uh, the reality is that we have not had any meetings of the North-South Ministerial Council uh, since the restoration of our institutions here in the North, and as I am sure the member understands. I am assuming that he is familiar with the detail of the Good Friday Agreement and that he has read it. It is a requirement that all of strands of the Good Friday Agreement should be operable at the same time. So it is a source of great regret that we have not seen the convening of the NSMC. Clearly, had the option been available to our own administration to convene the next plenary meeting, then that would have been dealt with at an earlier stage. But uh, this issue is beyond our particular control at this time. And I would urge that the Irish Government would address the omission of meetings uh, of the North-South Ministerial Council as quickly as possible. Are there any other members who wish to ask the question? I call John O'Dowd. Uh, thank you, Lars Kankoya. Um, Minister, Annex B of the New Decade New Approach sets out firm commitments from the Irish Government, including the establishment of a working group composed of representatives of the North-South Interparliamentary Association, as well as the Clerk of the DAL, to consider and make recommendations uh, within six months uh, focused on developing North-South parliamentary relationships. The six months is now up. Has there been any developments in those cases? Uh, well, the member is correct in his uh, noting of that detail. That is a, a precise explanation of the, the state of play. Uh, I, I note that that has been placed as an objective question. The objective answer to your question is no, that has not happened. Any other members who wish to ask the question? Uh, Mr. Aiken, earlier on, you wish to raise the point of order? Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, my point of order is, and much as I enjoy hearing the junior minister, and Declan is a fairly uh, fellow MLA from my constituency, I thought the degree of disrespect he showed to you after you made your ruling, I thought was something I would like the junior minister to address, because this is not just an issue of turning around and what it happens to be. For some of us of a certain age, it's quite difficult to hear uh, the junior minister speak sometimes, and I think on this occasion. I think, Junior Minister, you might like to apologise to the Deputy Speaker. Thank you. The member has his, uh, his point on the record. I was trying to encourage the Minister uh, to address the Chair to ensure that everyone is able to hear and the acoustics are, are appropriate. Uh, the member has his point on the record, and I'm sure the Speaker's office will be liaising with the Executive Office to try and encourage all Ministers and Junior Ministers uh, to put their remarks clearly on the record and that everyone will be able to hear what is being said. Okay. I would ask mem members to take their ease for a few moments.